Okay, guys. So um, we'll start this. We did these last night, and we know that an absolute value equation always splits into two parts. There's almost always two answers for an absolute value equation. Okay. Except I said before you split, you have to isolate it. Isolate it means get it alone. Okay, so we have to somehow get rid of the seven and the minus three. Okay, so we have to do those first. And we talked last night a lot about who do you get rid of first? Do you get rid of the three times or do you get rid of the seven, which is being added or subtracted here? It was always the added or subtracted thing. So we first want to get rid of the seven. So we take seven away from both sides. Okay. These cancel out, they're gone. This was for balance, remember that. Gotta keep your equation balanced. So we end up with here, negative three, absolute value x plus four equals negative 27. Okay. Now, again, isolate the absolute value quantity. Isolate it. Because when you have the negative three here, remember it's implied to be multiplication. So the only thing that cancels out multiplication is division by negative three, division by negative three. So after everybody gets wiped out, we get the absolute value of x plus four equals 27 divided by three is nine, negative divided by negative is positive. We don't need the positive symbol. So that would be everybody's first step. If I was to look at a quiz or a test, I would look to see, did you go from this problem to this? That would be a key step along your work. Did you isolate the absolute value symbol? Okay, that was one. Step number two, okay? Thinking about the absolute value. If the answer is nine, then what happens inside here? This could have been worth nine because the absolute value of nine is nine, or it could have been worth negative nine because the absolute value of negative nine is also nine. So those are our two equations. So we say x plus four could have been worth nine, or x plus four, the inside quantity, could have been worth negative nine. Okay, then quick solve, take away four from both sides here, we get x is five. Take away four from here, be very careful. You get negative 13, because negative nine, take away four is more negatives. Negative 13, solution set, five, negative 13. Remember, when you have a whole bunch of answers, you always want to pull them together into a single group of answers. You don't want them all over the page everywhere. Okay, so there's your answer. All right, that was number one. That's pretty normal question. I can almost guarantee on exam number one that something like that is going to show up. Any questions on that problem? What? Positive four plus negative nine is negative 13? No, I skipped, I didn't show a step. So when you're here, you have to take away four from both sides to get X oh, alone, right? Four. Yep. Right? So you take four away, the so plus four minus four cancels out, you get X is negative 13. Got it. Is that okay? Good. Okay. I, I skipped that step, I'm sorry. Any questions on that? That's pretty standard. And actually the truth is, is the problems in MOM, the absolute value equations that you might find in MOM are much simpler than this. Okay. But the key was first, isolate the absolute value quantity, then split into two problems. And that's where you get your two answers. Okay. What did people get here for an answer? 
Anybody? That's what I was wondering, because like no matter what you do inside of the absolute value, it's never going to give you a negative two because there's not a negative on the outside. Wait, my computer isn't telling me who's talking. Who's talking? Christopher. Chris. Christopher. Brilliant. Okay. Did you guys all hear what he said? It was at, why my screen isn't telling me who's talking. I don't know. It says I got clicked on speaker. I don't know. I'm zoomed. Screw it. Okay. His answer is brilliant. Okay. One of the things we talked about absolute value was okay. If you left yesterday to use the example, suppose you have the absolute value of three, the answer is three. Suppose you have the absolute value of negative three, the answer is also three. So what we concluded is that it doesn't matter what's inside, they could be three and negative three. The answer to an absolute value is always a positive number. Okay. But look what this is saying. This is saying here's an absolute value whose answer is negative. That's impossible. That's impossible. You could have quit right here and just said there's no solution. Okay, no solution to this equation. Remember, we talked about some of the some of the trick equations. You know, they, they were an identity or they were no solution or all that kind of crud. This is a no solution. Its statement is impossible. Okay. Um, six, two thirds. Anybody get something like two thirds and two or something like that for an answer? That's what no? I get. Okay. Remember I said that if if I were a really high quality instructor, I would make you take your answer and plug it in and check it. Remember, that's how you check your work. If I take your answer, plug it into the original and see, does it make the problem true? Okay, but I'm almost as lazy as you guys. And I don't want to do that. I just want to make sure I get it right the first time and then I don't have to check it because I'm lazy, okay? But if you did this problem, uh, four, six, then you got x is two or x is, I think, negative two thirds. I think, I, depending on what you did, if you, if you kind of split it up and work out the problem, neither of those would check. If you plug those in, okay, and worked out the math for x equals two, the answer would not be negative two. But if you understood what Chris said, hey, this is this is saying the answer is negative two, but wait, that's impossible. You could have quit right at the beginning and just said no solution. There's no reason for you to do work unless you really want to. Okay, so. I wanted to show you these two problems to compare and contrast. This one apparently equals a negative also. But wait, if you isolate it, suddenly this one, the isolated uh, absolute value equals positive. This is an okay problem. It'll have okay answers. But this absolute value, Isolated has a negative answer, impossible. Questions? And I do know that mom throws a couple of those at you. Okay. Third one, and then we'll get into new stuff. I want you to try this. This was called a compound inequality. Okay. It was negative 4.5 is less than or equal to 2x plus 6, which is less than 16.8. I want you to get the answer and then express the answer in interval notation. 
interval notation. Okay, we'll pause right now. Remember, this is called compound because it's actually two problems in one. You need to get X alone. Okay, so the object of this compound inequality is to get X that's in the middle by itself. So the middle only looks like X and not all this other junk. So to do that, we need to take away the six. Okay, but we need to take it away from all the parts of this problem. Instead of having a left side and a right side, this is left, middle, right. So if we do that, this should be negative 10.5 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than 10.8. I think that's right. Yeah. Anybody check my work? Am I doing okay? Yeah, that's where I am. Okay. So now we want to get X alone, but that's two times X. So we're going to divide by two. Divide by two. Divide by two. Okay. Use your calculator. I believe this is negative 5.25. It's less than or equal to X which is less than 5.4. And when that's on a test, how is it gonna cue us to like come to this conclusion? Well, it'll just, just say solve. Say solve. <laughs> it'll just say solve. And, and, and you're gonna go, oh, that's one of those compound inequalities those stupid ones that have three parts to it instead of just two parts. Uh, okay. You say that's a compound? It's called a compound inequality. Compound means two or more. If you think about our other inequalities, like 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to a 5, there's only one less than symbol. So this is called a simple inequality because there's only one less than symbol or greater than symbol, it doesn't matter. But this had two symbols in it. So it's a little bit harder, it's called a compound, okay? But the way you attack this is by going after all three parts at the same time, but keep in mind, you wanna get X alone and X is will always in our course be in the middle. Okay, this answer is correct, but it doesn't follow my instructions. This is called set notation. This is called set notation. Okay, and I know I didn't say the graph, but I, I'm real big on graphing. What this is saying literally is X is every number in between negative 5.25 and positive 5.4. Okay, and so to graph that, we shade in between those two numbers. Literally, that's what that says. X is every single number in between those two, except what do I put out here on the 5.4? Open right. circle? Open circle. The circle. We yeah. use the open circle because it's not equal. What do I put here on the negative 5.25? Closed circle. Closed circle or solid or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Because the equals is that. Now, then what my instructions were verbally, it will be written on the test, okay, was I want this in interval notation. So interval notation says my lowest number is 5.25, my highest number is 5.4, and I have a parenthesis on the 5.4 and a bracket on the negative 5.25. So 
when we shift from graph to interval notation, a solid dot becomes a bracket. The open circle becomes a parenthesis, always. If you have a solid dot, it'll be a bracket. If you have an open dot, it'll be a parenthesis. And this is called interval notation. So on a test when it says solve, and I see that it's a compound inequality, I'll know to make a set notation and interval notation. Well, that depends completely on the directions. Uh, a couple people missed problems on the mom quiz that we just took because they didn't read carefully. It said, express your answer in interval notation or interval form, okay? And people didn't do that and therefore they lost credit. So it depends solely on what the directions say. If the directions just say solve and didn't put any limitations on you, then this is a perfectly legitimate answer. Okay. Yeah. But if the directions said solve and express your answer in interval notation, now you're going to go a couple extra steps. Okay, you got to get this, and then you got to translate this into this. Okay, you don't have to graph, but I think better if I see the graph. Did I answer your question or not? Yeah. Anybody else? No? Okay. Did anybody do any of the homework on the section? Oh, I put it away. Where to go? Oh, and section 2.6, where they gave you formulas and ask you to uh, solve for a variable. Has anybody done any of that? and have a question on it. You know what I'm talking about or not? No? I know, I already did. You, you got it already? Did you have a question or not? No, no it's clear. Oh. Okay. Remember last night, um, If, suppose you had this formula, now we've jumped to, we jumped back to section 2.6, okay? And I just did one or two of these. Um, here's the area, you don't have to know this formula. Um, Okay, I, I'll show you what it is just for fun. It's A equals one half H times A plus B. Um, for, again, you're not required to know this one. I'll show you the ones you are required to know in a minute. Okay, but if you guys know what a trapezoid looks like, okay, a trapezoid looks like sort of a triangle. If you think of a triangle, and then you chop its head off. You chop the top off. That's called a trapezoid. And if you wanna find the area, if this whole side is B and this whole side is A and the height from A to B is H, we always use H for height. Then if I gave you those numbers, the area would be one half times the height times the A plus B, the quantity, the A plus B. Now, again, I just wanted to show you most of the formulas that mom gives you, 
okay, or that I will give you are actual um, formulas from math or science. But we'll, we'll say, for example, in this one, I want you to solve for H. And what that means is somehow, some way, get H alone. Okay. Um, you're not going to like this one. Anybody have any suggestions? Okay. Well, how about how, how do I get rid of the one half? What have we always Divide. done? Pardon me? Multiply. Okay. Multiply. Multiply. Multiply everything by two. Bingo. So if you multiply, several of you said it, you just got really kind of uh, scrambled there. If you multiply this side by two, can you guys see the green or not? Does it show up or not? Yeah. <laughs> kind of, sort of, okay. So if you multiply this side by two and this side by two, what, what you're going to get is 2a equals, okay, you're going to get two times a half times h parentheses a plus b because you're going to multiply it by two. Well, what's this two times a half going to do? What is two times a half? What a whole, one, 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 one. One. And what happens when you take any number times one? What if you did one times 100? 100. 100. So multiplying it by one, what if you did one times x? What do you get? X. X. Okay. So the idea here, this becomes one. And it becomes unimportant in this problem. So this problem is 2a equals h times a plus b. Okay, because these two cancel each other out. They technically made one, but one times anything is itself. And you times it by two because why? I needed to get rid of the half. Remember when we had equations like two thirds x plus uh, one half equals five? And we multiplied by the LCD. We said, what will get rid of the three and the two at the same time? Remember that? So the LCD was six. Because I knew that when I distribute six here, it'll cancel the three. And when I distribute six here, it'll cancel the two. Six. Six. So up here, I knew that if I multiply by two, it'll cancel that half because this is the common denominator for that problem. I'm wiping out, I'm trying to wipe out fractions. I hate fractions. Okay, so back here, then I got to erase this. Um, now we need to get H alone. There's a real slick way to do it. Okay. You can simply Say, I'm going to divide this side by that whole quantity, A plus B. And I'm going to divide this side by quantity A plus B. And I know that these two quantities, whatever they are, because they're the same, they will cancel each other out. Or, to be technically correct, they'll reduce to one again. And one times H is still H. Okay. But we all lazy, we like to say they cancel. So this is H because the A plus B is cancel. And this becomes 2A over A plus B quantity like that. And that's how you manipulate the equation to get H alone. Okay. Most of the problems in chapter 2.6 for mom are much simpler than this. But the idea is they're going to give you an equation and ask you to get the variable alone. 
okay, in, in it somehow. And it'll be a simple equation. We did um, we did a triangle last night. Uh, what else did we do last night? Oh, we did perimeter and area, or perimeter rather, of a rectangle. So what I'm hoping is that you guys over the weekend or whatever will try this homework or at least try it before tomorrow, Thursday's quiz, so I can answer some questions for you. Okay. I have a quick couple. question. Yeah, shoot. So, okay. The, see how it becomes a 1W or what was it? One. Where did you have that? You showed it uh, in one of these problems. Yeah, it became one and then it becomes 1H. Basically, it just becomes H, right? Right. Okay. But uh, in question, this was a while back. This was. Um, 1.2, I got the answer wrong, where the answer was 0 W minus 3. If there's a 0, why do we have to put that in there? And the answer, we don't have, have to put that in there. That should, no, shouldn't have been 1. That should have gone away. Mom shouldn't have accepted that. It should yeah, have just been W wrong. minus 3, right? No. Should have been just minus 3. Okay. Oh, because then two problems later, or like uh, four problems later, I got it correct because I put zero W minus 16. Okay, I have no idea. Okay, why, we'll tell you why later. mom is doing that. Okay, if you had one W plus three, we say the, we say my pin is running out of ink. We say the one, is not important to us, okay? Because ah, oh my goodness loves me because I keep chipping my teeth. So oh, in this one, we say 1w plus 3 should be changed into just w plus 3 because 1 times w is w. Remember, mathematicians are lazy. They want to use the least number of symbols necessary to express the answer. But what if we have 0w plus 3? Well, wait. What is zero times anything? Zero. Zero. So this becomes zero plus three. So what's the better answer? Three. Just three. I so I don't know why mom accepted this. She shouldn't have. Okay. Because that goes away. So we have all these things in math that go away depending on certain circumstances. Here, these became a one, two times a half of the one, and one times H is just H. Okay, so in effect, it went away. It went away for a reason. It just doesn't go away, okay? But there's a math reason why it's there. I don't know why mom accepted that, or you said 16 or something like that, plus 16. I have no clue why mom accepted that. Okay, I, did I confuse the issue or are you okay with me? No, I understand what I'm going on. Okay, all right. Okay, so in section 2.6, there's a couple of problems. You should give them a try and come back tomorrow and uh, during office hours or maybe the first part of class, uh, I can help you with one or two of those. Okay, at worst, uh, I better not say that. In the chapter two quiz, there might be one of those. So don't lose sleep over it. Don't lose sleep. Okay. Um, I want to move on. This was all, believe it or not, with you on some form. Okay. Ah, 
Yeah. Uh, I asked you the other day to download this worksheet. It was on Canvas. Okay. Um, and these are formulas that at this level in your math, you should know these without prompting, without having to look them up. Okay. If you need me, we're going to be doing some word problems in a minute that use these. Um, and I'll try and explain the formulas in, but really and truly, those of you who are making flashcards, you should know these like instantaneously. What's the perimeter of a rectangle? Bam. Okay. What's the area of a rectangle? Something like that. What's the, okay, perimeter of a uh, triangle is kind of stupid. There is no formula for the perimeter of a triangle. Like here, there is no formula. So when we write it down, we just say it's the three sides. Okay. The three sides there. Um, there's two circumference. Remember, circumference is just a fancy word for a perimeter. If, if a shape has straight edges, we use the word perimeter. If the shape has curved edges, we use the word circumference. Okay. And the curved edges almost always involve pi. So, anyways, this worksheet I gave you, it was on Canvas um, in the, I think it's in the chapter one, two folder on Canvas. Um, you need to download that so you can quiz yourself. There are some other formulas. If you move it up, that was kind of hard to see. That's why I asked you guys to, uh, to print it out. This is called Pythagorean theorem, or some of you learned it as Pythagorean formula. Uh, uh, it's really important. It only is good for the sides of a triangle, of a right triangle. Of the word right means it's got a 90 degree angle in it. Now, when I taught geometry uh, 9 billion years ago in high school, I never ever let my students say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I never did. Okay, let me come back. Uh, There we go. In a right triangle, a right triangle, okay, means you have a 90 degree angle somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Okay, there's your 90 degree. Okay, the two sides that make up the 90 degree angle is called a leg and a leg. Okay, those are your two sides of your 90 degree angle. This is called the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, which no one can spell, so we always abbreviated HYP, because once again, we're all lazy, we don't know how to spell. Okay, so we did uh, write it as HYP. Um, what, what I forced my students to learn is this is the correct vocabulary. It was one of the legs, quantity squared, plus the other leg, and it doesn't matter who quantity squared, doesn't matter which leg comes first, always equals the hypotenuse quantity squared, whatever that is. And when you draw this, the hypotenuse is always the side opposite the right angle, wherever the right angle was down there. Again, if you learned it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that's cool. I'm not going to change you. But please be aware, C always stands for the hypotenuse, okay? So when you're putting numbers into this formula and you're saying C squared, the C is out here by itself, okay? Just like the hypotenuse is out here by itself, hypotenuse squared, C squared. C must be the hypotenuse. If you get the things mixed up, okay, then your answer will be totally wrong. So I want to do um, a couple of word problems real quick. Run you through these so you have um, so you have kind of an idea how to use these and we'll see what we do. Um, the I'll put these up and then I have to take it down and write on the board. 
Okay, so we're going to do the first one here. We'll switch back. Ooh, where is it? There it is. Whoop, yeah, that's good. Yes. Okay, I want to do this problem. Now, again, remember I asked you guys to download it, so you should have it kind of in front of you. The Pythagorean theorem stuff, is that chapter 2.3? Yep. And, and, well, I'm gonna do a problem with it tonight. Make sure you know what you're doing. Um, it's gonna be one of those formulas that keeps reoccurring throughout the semester. Okay, we're gonna keep coming back and we're going to keep using uglier and uglier type numbers with the Pythagorean formula. Okay, it says if the perimeter of a rectangle is 45 inches and the length is 12.8, find the width, find the area. So I'm going to have to draw this, go back to my screen. So problem number one says we have a rectangle. I always try to draw pictures if I can. I know my perimeter, the overall perimeter, they told me was 45 inches. Okay, That's a big clue, by the way. The length is 12.8 inches. Okay, so what I do is I pull from memory the whole perimeter formula, P equals 2L plus 2W. Now it's the whole thing, okay? It includes P equals all of these because you, you want to have some, something for everything. So I start plugging in, what do I have? Well, P was 45. This formula tells you where to plug in. P is 45, so I have 45 equals two times the length, two times 12.8 plus 2W, okay? At this point, at this point, it's, it's just an algebra problem, okay? I think the first thing I would do on this one The first thing I would do is do two times 12.8, okay? Just so I can, it's easier. So now I ask myself, all right, how do I solve this algebra problem? Okay, I think you take away 25.4 from both sides. Okay, use your calculator, don't be a hero. 45, take away. And I get 19.6. Okay. Okay. Anybody working with me? Am I, have I done anything dumb yet? So I have got 25 point, I got 25.6 as the uh, two times uh, 12.8. Oh gosh, that. you're right. Dang it. And I was a hero. I tried to do it in my head. And I got it all screwed up and that screws everything up. So, thank you very much. Man, that just, that screws everything. 25.6. 6. So, so much for being a hero, Foster. 45, 2.25.6, 19.4, is that better? Okay, so divide both sides by two. That's negative, 19.4. Is it? 
If you have positive 45. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, you're thinking of multiplying and dividing. We're, we're adding and subtracting now. Okay. Divided by dose. I get 9.7. Can anybody confirm 9.7? Yes. Equals W. So, what have I done? The question said, what's the width? Okay, so width is 9.7 inches. Don't forget the units. This isn't a strictly an algebra problem, it's just not 9.7. You don't put it in solution set and all of those fancy symbols. This is a word problem. Again, what I used to teach high school and middle school, okay, I forced my students because I could intimidate the little darlings. Okay, I forced them that they had to write a complete sentence for every word problem. My reasoning was, if it starts with words, we turn it into algebra so we can solve it, but you must end with words. Okay, and the English teachers all loved me because, of course, I was supporting their English, you know, that kind of nonsense. Uh, but anyways, somehow or other, tell me that this is the width and use inches or feet or whatever it was. All right. Second half of the problem says, what's the area? Okay. So problem number one says, what's the area? So you, out of thin air, have to go, oh, what's the formula for the area of a rectangle? Okay. And so you write the whole thing. Area is length times width. Area is length times width. That's the formula. It's not just length times width. It's A equals length times width. Now, what do we put in? Well, we have A equals 12.8 inches times 9.7 inches. OK. And I wrote the inches up there on purpose. I know many of you don't write it. Many of you are, are lazy and just won't put it up. I put it up there for a reason, which I want to explain. So now I whip out my calculator, which is 12.8 times 9.7. Well, 8 times 12.8 equals 9.7. Boom. And I get 124.16. Now. A equals 124.16. Okay, but something interesting happened. We also multiplied inches times inches. Okay, inches times inches is inches squared, just like x times x is x squared. Okay, this is the new modern way of indicating dimensions on a shape. In the old fashioned, when you talk to your parents or grandparents, they probably did something like this. Squawk in. 124.16 squawk in. It stood for square inches or inches squared. That was old fashioned traditional. This is new modern. I don't care which one you use. But you'll see this more and more often. Why is it inches squared? Because you did inch times inch, okay, which is inches squared. All right, that's it for problem number one. Questions? You notice I always start with the formula, almost always start with the formula because it guides me. It tells me what numbers do I plug in and where do I stick them? I can't put the 45 here for the W, I gotta put it over here because the 45 represents a perimeter. So you need that formula to help you. All right, I wanna erase this and go on to the next problem. Any questions on that one before I do erase the board? Um, not so much about the problem, but I do have a question. Where do I find in Canvas the sheet with the formulas we need to memorize? If you go to uh, module, 
chapter one, two. Right up at the top. Um, you see it up there or not? It says formulas. It's loading. Okay, that's it. But I mean, you don't want to do it now. Just uh, you know, print it out at home or, or print it out later. All right. Moving moving on to the next problem. Number two. Russ, I got a question. Yeah. When you say print it out, is uh, these quizzes and stuff open book? Okay, hang, hang on a minute. Um, no, not, not every quiz will be open book. When I said print this handout out, it was so you could have something in front of you to memorize. Got it. Okay. It, I'm not suggesting some quizzes will be open note, some tests will be open note or open book. Some of them will, some of them will not be. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know just if we was uh, having open book tests or not, so I can know for the future. So the answer is my smart ass answer yes and no. Okay. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. But the reason this is called memorize is so that even if we have a no note, not open book test, you still have these memorized. All right, let's shift to the next problem here. Boom. Oops, that's not good. All right, if you don't have it, take a second to copy that down and think about what formulas would you use? Are you gonna need, what formulas are we gonna kind of pull out of memory to use here? The area of a circle is 276 inches square. Use pi plus 3.4, arrange your final answer to nearest hundredth. Find the radius, find the circumference. Okay. Let's switch back to my whiteboard. Okay. Um, so we have a circle. This is number two. We have a circle. Boom, center. We know the area of the circle, they told me, was 276 inches square. Okay. Now, a little bit of review here. Okay, and then I'm going to have to erase this. We know from center to edge, that's called the radius. From center to edge is called the radius. But from edge to edge through the center is called the diameter. And just a little bit of vocabulary there. So from center to edge is called the radius of the circle. From diameter or from edge to edge through the center is called the diameter. And we also know that two radiuses equals one diameter. A diameter is a radius and a radius. Two times the radius is equal to one diameter. We know that conversion formula. So let's see what I have. What's the problem? Tell me. The area is this. There's my center. And it says, oh, find the radius. All right. Well, the only formula I know for area of a circle is A equals pi times the radius to the second power. So I have 276 is is my 
answer over here equals the problem told me that pi is 3.14 times radius to the second power. Okay, so I'm plugging in what I know. I wrote down the formula. Under the A, I put down what they told me. Under the pi, I put down what they told me. Now I want to isolate R squared. I want to get it by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3.14 to get R squared by itself. Calculator. Yahoo! 276 divided by 3.14. Oops, I screwed that one up. Now, hang on a minute. Yes. This is 87.898089817 equals R to the second power. That's what my calculator is. Can anybody, did you guys all get the same thing on yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now we, we need to we need to have a philosophical discussion here for just a second. Okay. The answer said round to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Super important. It means round your answer. It doesn't mean round in the middle of the problem. Okay. That's a confusing thing for all students. They go, well, it said round to the hundredth. Okay, so I should be able to round this. Okay, no. Rounding always is to your answer. You get your answer, your final, final answer, and then you round it. Okay, so we're not going to round this at all. We're going to leave it there. On your calculator, um, you should have. Okay. Um, how do I want to do this? Okay. On the TI-80 or the TI-36X or whatever, okay, you have an X squared button. And above it, you have a square root button. And the way you activate the square root button is by hitting shift. Shift? No, your calculator uses second. I'm sorry. Second x squared. You hit that button. You hit the second button and the x squared button. And what you'll see on your screen is a square root button. Okay. Why? Well, everything in math has something that cancels it out. We know that addition and subtraction cancel each other out. We know that multiplication and division cancel each other out. We also know that the square root and the square power cancel each other out. The square root and the square power. So what you're gonna get here is you're gonna get R because the square root cancels the square power, and then you're going to put that whole ugly thing inside of that. So try that on your calculator. Put all that 87 point garbage, garbage, garbage in the square root answer. So I get 9.375398 and blah, 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 blah. It goes on forever. Okay. That's my answer. That's my final answer. Now I can round it. Couldn't round it before. You're not supposed to round 
in the middle of a problem. Okay, you keep all the ugly decibels as many as you can handle. Keep them all. But now that we're done, now we round to the nearest hundred. Okay, so the seven is in the hundreds place. We look at the five. Is the five big enough to keep the seven up? Yes. So we get 9.38 equals R. Technically, we should say is approximately R. But that's 9.38. What are my units? Inches. Okay. So a couple things we've done here. So I want to make sure I haven't totally lost everybody. In algebra, okay, when we write an algebra expression with an algebra equation with square powers, okay, we know that the square root cancels the square power. The square root and the square power, but we always have to do both sides. Okay, the same. If you're going to square root this side to cancel the square power, you got to square root this side. So that's where we get x equals, this is x equals, and then our knowledge says the answer is three. And we're going to go into a lot more detail on this square rooting stuff in chapter nine. But basically, that's what you kind of had to do to get rid of the power on the R. You had to square root both sides. All right, we have one more step to do on this problem. Any questions so far? Any questions? All right, second half of the problem says, what's the circumference? Okay, circumference. Okay, there are two formulas for circumference. 2 times pi times r, or circumference is pi times diameter. And these are exactly the same, except remember we said if you have two r's, it's the same as one d. Two r's is the same as a d. And that's why you can have two formulas there. It all depends on what information is given to you. So looking at this circle, what have I just figured out? Oh, I figured out the radius is 9.38. Just figured that one out. Okay, from this down here. So which formula should I pick? They're the same. Yeah, I mean, whichever yeah. you want. <laughs> huh? Well, what, what information do I have in my problem that guides me to picking the right answer or the right equation? You, you have the radius. So yeah. yeah, so why I should use that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if another problem you had the diameter, I'd use that one. But because you have the radius, I'm going to use that one, all because I'm lazy. So we have two times 3.14 times 9.38, okay? Now, hold on. I know a lot of people are gonna go, oh, this is two times 3.14 and two times 9.8. No, it's not, no. If you wanna distribute the two, it would have to be 3.14 plus 9.38. The distributive property has either a plus or a minus inside there. This is, doesn't have a plus or minus. This is just straight multiply the suckers together. So just pop them into your calculator, 2 times 3.14 times 9.38. It is not distributed.
and let's see what I got. I get 58.9064. Can you make me from that? Yep. But, okay, I need to round to the nearest hundredth for a final answer. So my circumference is 58.91. And my unit is inches. And that's my answer. So again, you had to know the formulas. The new thing that we picked up here is the square rooting both sides to get rid of a square power. Okay. All right. It's getting long. All right, I think we'll do one more, take a break, come back and do one more word problem, and then uh, start chapter four a little bit. We're a little bit behind. Okay, a little bit behind. So I wanna jump to number four on the word problems. Show it to you. Okay, whoops, I didn't show up. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is 234 centimeters. While one leg is 87 centimeters long, find the length of the other leg. Round your final answer to the thousandth of a centimeter. Okay, you can do that. So let's switch back to my whiteboard. So in a right triangle, now the reason I highlighted this, this is problem number four, is a right triangle is a special kind of triangle. It's got a 90 degree angle there. Right means right angle or 90 degrees. Okay, so there's my drawing. It says the hypotenuse is 234 centimeters. And one of my legs is 87 centimeters. So it doesn't matter which one. 87, I'll do it here. By the other leg. Okay, so that's what the... Uh, problem tells me, okay, I am supposed to know because it's got, it's talking about the sides of a right triangle, because that's what this problem is, is giving me. That has to imply that we're going to use Pythagorean formula. Okay which is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And so we're just gonna plug in these numbers. We're gonna have X squared for one of the legs. The other leg is 87 squared. And the other leg is 234 squared. So that's just simple plug it in. 
Okay, here's your formula, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. I plugged in the numbers. Now, this is just the massive calculator stuff, but it uses that idea of square rooting. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go is what's 87 squared? Turn it on. Okay, so I have x squared, can't do it, plus 7, 5, 6, 9 equals, okay, that's 234 squared. Five, four, seven, five, six. Okay. We're going to take away seven, five, six, nine. And I go up here, I get x squared equals my calculator says 47187. Okay, I'm going to stop talking and let you guys catch up with me. Any questions about my work to this point? Okay. Nobody's talking, so I guess everybody just took a break early. I don't know, whatever. All right. So now we're down to that new idea. I've got x squared equals something. The only thing that gets rid of the square power is a square root. That's the only thing that does it. Square root of both sides. Again, we're back to that balance. If I square root one side, I have to square root the other. So now I got to go to my calculator and do that. There we go. So I get x is two one seven point two two five six eight nine one. Did everybody find the square root button on your calculator? And do you know how to activate it? Okay. I have no idea. There's all kinds of garbage going on. Okay. Uh, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So now. We, it, it said round to the nearest thousand? Yeah, what kind of idiot thought up that problem? All right. Our decimals are tenths, hundreds, thousands. Remember, that's the place value. Tenths, hundreds, thousands. So the five is in the thousands place, but we always look to the right. Always. So is the six big enough to round the five up? Yeah. So our final answer is X is 217.22. The five gets rounded up to six and my units were centimeters. Okay. And this was the other leg. Questions? Okay, uh, let's come back at five after eight. That's a 10 minute break, relax. Um, 
we have one word problem to do. I need to figure out what my dog is attacking and uh, then we'll get off into chapter four. So let's take about a 10 minute break. Okay, relax, go take some Excedrin, do something like that. I'm gonna pause this thing now. About time, Foster. All right, in chapter four, so draw a really heavy line in your notes. Okay, totally new chapter. It'll have its own quiz and only for chapter four. Okay, uh, and it will not be on this week's quiz at all. Okay, so relax, concentrate on chapters one and two. We're skipping number three, gone. Chapter four talks about equations with two variables. Okay. Now, if you think about all the equations we've been doing, they always have one variable, x. Okay. It doesn't have to be x, but we're boring. We just always use x. But equations with two variables, just, just for fun, might be x plus y equals 5. OK, that's an equation with two variables. Now, a solution okay, is equal to the ordered pair of x comma y that makes it true. Uh -huh. What's all that crap mean? I'll show you. Okay. Is four comma one a solution? Now, this is what you're gonna get in mom. They're gonna give you an equation. They're gonna say, is this a solution to this equation? So what are they asking you to do? It's pretty simple. What are they asking you to do? Plug in the numbers. Plug it in. So is four for X plus one for Y, does it equal question mark five? And you don't have to do any work. You go, yeah, it is. Okay, that's that simple. A solution, remember, makes it true. Solution, and truth mean the same thing in mathematics. Okay, so question, same equation is uh, six comma negative one, a solution. Is six comma negative one, a solution? Yeah. Yes, okay, you guys all agree? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. No. Yeah. You guys all agree or not? Yes. Okay. Is nine negative three a solution? For that equation. For this equation. No. No. Okay. No. And I'm assuming right now, most of you guys are doing your, your arithmetic mentally. Nine plus negative three is six, don't equal five, screw it, it's done. Okay, so check this out. Um, one, let's do one more. Can anybody come up with another solution? Can anybody come up with a solution that would work on this equation? 10 minus 10 and negative five. Okay, 10, negative five, that's a yes. Anybody else, another one? Um, five comma zero. Good, five comma zero. Anybody else? Eight, negative three. Okay, eight, negative three, yep. How about zero comma five? But this, see, this one, five comma zero, the X was five, the Y was zero. But in zero comma five, the y, x was zero and the y was five. Okay, but it still worked out. 
Okay, anybody else? No? Two, three, or three, two? They all work. Okay, there's, there's a bunch more. Actually, that's a kind of an important thing. I just kind of said it and I thought, you know, that's the key to this. How many solutions are there to this equation? How many solutions? Pardon me? Infinite. Infinite. There's an infinite number of solutions. But wait a minute, that doesn't mean just any old numbers you pick are right, because we saw this one. That wasn't right. There's an infinite number of solutions that make it right, but there's also an infinite number of solutions that make it wrong. Huh? All right. Again, we're back to some math philosophy here. Math philosophy. Okay. Mathematicians want to be able to see all of the solutions to this equation. Okay, we want that. Well, first off, it's impossible. Well, that didn't stop mathematicians. So what they did is they made up, do you guys remember how to graph a line? We make a line and we call this one the x-axis. Then we call this one the y-axis. Okay. And, um, and the x-axis has a number line on it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And fractions, decimals. The y-axis also has number lines on it. And so we can plot, okay, the ordered pair. We always do X first, X, then Y. Well, we can't do that. So if we plot five comma zero, one, two, three, four, five comma zero. That's right there. If we go eight, negative three, well, here's five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Most of you, I am hoping, remember how to plot points, eight, negative three. Wait, where would zero, five be on this? X is zero, Y is five. Always well, we start at the origin, the center. X is zero, which means what do I do? Uh don't go sideways, but go up. One, two, three, four, five. Something's really weird. Okay. Um, two comma three. Okay. We're being invaded by aliens. Um, okay. What's happening here? is we're beginning to see a shape take place, okay? If we did more and more of these points, if we sat here all night and I asked you guys, give me more points, give me more points, okay? For example, you could go, oh, 4.9 comma 0.1, because 4.9, plus 0.1 is five, okay? Anyway, if we did this all night long, we begin to get all of these things filled in and more. Oops, can't even draw a straight line, dummy. And so we reach this big philosophical idea. First, a line is made up of an infinite number of points. We as humans are lazy and we just go like this, or we just draw it solid. But we're misleading everybody when we just draw a line. 
a line is made up of all kinds of points of ordered pairs. And the thing that all of these have in common is any point I pick here is a solution to this equation. Okay, so what I've just tried to walk you to is an equation in two variables has an infinite number of solutions, an infinite number of solutions. The graph is our way of showing those solutions. So this equation and this graph are exactly the same as each other to a mathematician. This is an equation that, that has an infinite number of solutions. This is a graph made up of infinite dots that are the solutions. These are the same. Okay. Um, that, in a nutshell, is what we're going to be studying in chapter four. We're going to be studying equations of equations of two variables and their graphs. And how do you graph them quick? How do you graph them fast? And some other information about it. Okay. A couple things that mom is going to have you do. In section 4.1. In chapter 4.1. Mom is going to give you a bunch of ordered pairs. Okay, and I just made these up. A is three comma seven. B is two comma negative one. C is seven comma zero. D is zero comma negative three. And mom is going to ask you to plot these. Plot these. All that means is that you're going to put them on an XY axis. Okay. And put a big fat dot there. So three comma seven. Remember the first number always represents the direction of X. The second number represents the direction of Y. And you always start here. So this says go over three on the X, go up seven on the Y, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is plotting of point A. So you put a big fat dot there. And mom will have a grid and ask you to put a dot at each one of these things. Okay. What about seven comma zero? That always confuses people. Seven comma zero. Well, remember the first number is X. The second number is Y. So it says on the X, go seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and on the Y, go to no place. Don't move off of this. So this would be C. That okay with everybody? Okay, see if you can just in your mind picture where would be point B be and where would point D be put place. Okay, so for me, 
B says go over two on the X. Again, you always start here. This is called the origin. So when you're plotting, you start back here at zero, zero. Okay, zero, zero. Anybody ever, anybody a Star Trek fan? Okay, Voyager, Unimatrix, zero, zero. No, never mind. Okay. Um, you start here. This is called the origin, which is also the point zero, zero, because it's zero on the X, zero on the Y. You go over two, one, two, and down one, negative one. So right about there would be where I would put the point B. I would plot B right there. Okay. And D. My, D says, start at the origin. Don't go anywhere on the X. Stay on zero on the X but then go down three on the Y. And so that would be point D. Does the green show up for you guys up there, out there? Yes, it does, Professor. Okay. Because I know some of these, we've talked before, some of these colors are stupid. They don't show up. So anyways, part of 4.1 is going to give you some ordered pairs and ask you simply to plot them to make sure you know where they are. Another part of section 4.1 is going to put a number here, like let's call this W. Okay. And they're going to ask you, what is the ordered pair for W? Okay. What is W's ordered pair? Well, this is kind of dumb on this drawing because you're you have no reference. You don't know what your numbers are. Anybody want to take a guess at what they think W is? Seven. Seven? Yeah. No. I, I agree with seven, but no. I'm being nitpicky. Negative seven. Yeah. Probably, I'm guessing, okay? I'm guessing this is negative seven. Yes, it was seven units, but it was in the negative direction. You know, and if somebody said negative eight or somebody said negative 7.3, yeah, 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 you got it. It'll be much clearer on mall, much clearer, okay? I call this seven, maybe six, seven, maybe five. I don't know, I'm guessing. Okay, what about down here? What if we call this point P? Anybody want to take a shot at point P? Negative seven, negative seven. Yeah, that seems fair to me. Back seven on the X, down seven on the Y. That seems good. Okay, so that's one of the things mom is going to do. Still in chapter 4.1, we haven't changed from that. We need to get some vocabulary so that everybody's talking the same numbers. Okay, I've already talked about this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. I've already said this is called the origin, which is also the point zero zero. Okay, an axis, by the way, is just a line. It's a fancy word for a line. The X line, only we say X axis. The Y line is called the Y axis. And all they are is number lines, that's it. But up here, the X and Y axis divide the plane, divide the chalkboard into what are called quadrants. Okay, but again, we, uh, it's the downfall of all of Western civilization. 
We don't want to spell quadrant, so we use Q. Okay. And we use Roman numerals because that's sure to screw up students. So this is called quadrant one, Q1, quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. We always use capital Roman numerals like that. We never use the numbers one, two, and three. We don't say Q4. For some reason in math, we use Roman numerals. Okay, so be careful. And there's one more feature that we want to talk about. These are called the quadrants. Quad means four. Quadrant, 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 quadrant. Okay. What can you tell me about the sign of the ordered pairs in this quadrant? Sign meaning positive and negative. So if I want to get into this quadrant, what will my ordered pairs be? be? Positive. 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 Yeah, two of you talking over each other, but yes, positive, positive. You'll have a positive X, a positive Y. What about here in quadrant four? Positive, negative? Yep. Because you're going to have a positive X. Remember, you always do X first. So X, down, drop here into Y. What about quadrant three? Negative, 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 and quadrant two just for completeness. Negative, positive. Yep. Notice they're always ordered pairs. By the way, ordered pairs are always put in these parentheses. That's how they're tied together. Okay. So again, Mama asked some dumb questions about which quadrant is point W in, or which quadrant is um point a in or something like that uh over here c is not in a quadrant it's on an axis don't be tricked quadrants are up here this is on the line it's not on a quadrant so don't be tricked that way all right i want to do one more thing with uh 4.1 and then we'll do a little bit of 4.2 and then we'll quit. 4.1, 4.2, what can I erase? Probably you guys, you're okay. This is still section 4.1. Is there no assignments for chapter three? No. There are none. We're, I thought that whatever is in three, I can throw, I can slip in when we need it. But no, there's no chapter three assignments. Okay. Um, in chapter 4.1 still, the directions will be something like find the missing variable. Okay. So first, they're going to give you some crazy equation. Like 2x plus y equals, I don't know, 8. I just make it up. Okay, just made it up. Secondly, they're going to give you a variable. They're going to say, hmm, what if x was negative 2? Okay, then they're going to say, find the value of y. So what are you gonna do? They're gonna give you an equation. 
they're going to tell you that x was negative 2, and they want you to find y. How are you going to do that? Nobody else? Um, I heard something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's happening out there. But what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. So we have 2x plus y equals 8. We're going to plug in x is negative 2. So this is 2 times negative 2 plus y equals 8. Remember, 2x means 2 times x. Okay, so we're going to get negative 4 plus y equals 8. Okay, and add 4 to both sides. And we get y is 12. Okay. Y is 12. So that's all they're going to ask you to do is they're going to give you an equation. They're going to tell you the value of one of the variables, and they're going to ask you what's the value of its partner, its pair, according to this formula. So you just plug in that number and figure out what the other value is. For the same equation, what if I said uh, find x? If y is uh, 3, find x if y equals 3. Professor, is, uh, is that an 8? Yes, that's an 8. Okay, sorry. This one right here? That's an eight. No, the one that the, the one that you just did, the x times eight. Well, uh, the last um, equation. This one here? No, the last the last one. That you, yeah. Oh, that's a three. This is find x if y equals three. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Is it 2.5? Or 5 over Yeah. But that's 2.5. Yeah. So we plug it in. We start. We have 2x plus the 3 that we plug in equals 8. Take away 3 from both sides. Okay. So we get 2x is 5. Divide by 2 x is 5 over 2, or you could say 2 and a half, or you could say 2.5. All of those are the same. Okay, I was going to do more. We have to do more tomorrow night in Chapter 4. We've got a power on. We didn't get nearly enough done, but we, I worked it real hard tonight. So I'm just going to quit right now. I am not going to take a roll, but I do wish, hang on, don't go away yet. Um, um, uh, Alante, are you still here? Yep. Okay. Um, you added the class already, right? Right. Yeah, and you had all kinds of trouble doing it. Is that correct? I did. Did you figure it out or did your counselor figure it out? Um, I figured it out. What I what I had to do was I had to just wait for those, those codes that you gave me. And then once I put those codes in, uh, my notice on my account came through talking about I needed to update or upload my vaccinations or my, uh, you know, any records for COVID and stuff like that. So, but But it did accept the codes. It didn't give you any hassle over that. Uh, no, right, right. Once I got the codes in, we was good. And then they sent me another notification. 
Okay. The first uh, one. So the first. So the first time around, though, I did get a set that where the, it wasn't even finding the classes. So I think I emailed you a few different times. Right. And then I and then you gave me a different course number than the one that was originally coming up when I would uh you know search for the class. So you gave me the correct course number, and then I typed that in, and then I took the the permission numbers that you gave me and plugged them in. Okay. Do do you happen to have? The reason I'm asking is we have a new student, Amelia, who's trying to add, and she's getting the same crap on the computer that you got. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to learn from your experience. Do you happen to remember what the course numbers were? Mm. No, if, if you don't know, don't worry about it. I mean, the, uh, I got them. I got them on my uh, my canvas. Hold on. Pulling it Are up those right the now. course numbers you sent me, Professor, in the email? They should be. Those, those should be. those in. You but try I'll put it again real quick. I have the open up on a side window. Okay. Everybody else, I'm not taking all. So if you don't want to be involved in this discussion, you're welcome to, to log out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have um, a good night. Bye -bye. Adios. Adios. Hasta luego. Okay, so the course numbers I got was A1422 and A1423. Wait, can you repeat those real quick? So I can yeah, I got them because they're the same ones I gave you. Right. Math, 90, okay. math 96 was 81422. 81422. And Math 15B was 81423. Okay, and then let me confirm with you, where am I entering those in at to make sure I'm doing it the correct place? That's where, uh, Jesus. So you would go, right, so you would go to the, um, when you're on your college the dashboard, you go to the class search. Um, I noticed it was two different ways. It was, I noticed it was two different ways to look up classes because I looked it up one way and then I showed a whole different, you know, list of classes. Yeah. Um, so I went can to the. Can you just initial. put in? Can you put in those numbers? Because I have time? it right now, where I have this class in my shopping cart, Math ninety six X, um, with Professor Foster. Oh no no no! Don't don't no no no! That's one thing you don't want. So since you already in your cart, go to Add Class and type in those new numbers. Because the ninety six X was different. That was the original one that I had. And then I had to swap it out for the ones that he just gave me. It was because the 96X, I believe it was like one course number for both classes. But Professor Foster gave me uh, two different uh, course numbers. One was like four credit and then the other one was for five credit. OK, so I need to search the class number and add it that way for a yeah. Right. Search. Yeah. OK. All right. So, I will do that. And then for your Canvas, the um, syllabus is on there and do you have the lectures from the past few days so i can watch them and write down these notes to help me better well, for the work yeah the answer is okay alante thank you um, no problem. very much if you want to stick around cool if you don't that's fine too i want to i want to get amelia uh kind of going does anybody have a quickie question i got tommy and Anahi still there you guys just kind of listening or? Yeah, I'll stick around. Okay, all right. So let me, once you get into, come on, wake up. There we go, okay. Once you get into Canvas. Yeah. See, yeah, now it's saying again that it's not letting me, I'm putting in the class number. Yeah, I put in an email to the head counselor. Yeah, because I've been on phone with Mesa because I was in the trigonometry class. And right. it's just, I was like, I know I need this for my prereq, but I need a refresher on math before I take all that. So okay. that's why they recommended me here. Okay, let me, okay. You keep trying. I'm going to show you okay. something. I will call tomorrow and see if I can get you in differently okay? okay but but you keep trying in the meantime but i want to show you something uh what is my password did you uh did you go down to enrollment and add classes uh, let me try that on the side 
Yeah, here, I'm just gonna delete what's in my shopping cart. Right, and then just start fresh. Go to yeah. click my classes and go down to enrollment. Can I, do you guys know how I can give? Are, are you guys communicating? Yeah, now I need the permission number. Okay, and I gave you that in my email too. Do okay, I give it to you again? Do you want me to give it to you again? Yeah, I, I have it right here. Okay. 16, uh, 586. Yeah, but remember they're different for different courses. So maybe. Yeah, that's for the uh, 96. And then for the Math 15B, there's a different permission right. number. I mean, since they went this new, this new thing, I like Canvas, but I hate how you guys have to register. It, it's, it's insane. Did that work? Yeah, I'm doing the last one right now. Okay. And then once we, not next week, but the week after this class is in person on campus. Right. Okay. Not next week, but the week starting after. February. 20th. Yeah, and I'll be putting out lots of emails and writing on my board and everything, reminding everybody. All right, Professor, I'm up. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your help. No problem. Yeah, now it's saying, it still says the permission, um, I need a permission number and I put them in, but it won't let me in still. Uh, I mean, fudge. Uh, let me double check. Okay, what permission number is giving you errors on both classes or on one Yeah, because class? what I did is I wrote the class number for, e I put the class number in for each one. And then yeah. for that class number, I put in the permission code for each one. Right, and then both of them are basically saying you must obtain permission to take this class to take this class. Okay, what permission number are you using for math? What class code and what permission number for um, math? For math 96, I'm using 81422 right. with the permission code 16586. And then for no, 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 no. I have one six five eight one six. What did I type? Did I screw it up? Yeah, you gave me six uh one six five eight six. Oh, the uh, try In the email. Shit. I, I'm sorry. Try no, this okay. one. One six. Wait, let me write it. Okay. So this is for uh 96 math. Right. Okay, one six. Five eight one five, six eight, one six okay and then can you do it for the fifteen just to make sure I have yeah, that yeah we'll double check yeah do you want do you want me to put that in and see what it does alrighty all right classes I'm sorry excuse me instructor yeah I'm oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was just Tom. holding on um uh yeah sorry um uh, did uh, I, I, I found the code. I don't know if I, for yesterday's or yesterday's attendance for the, the um, you know, the animal code. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if, if that was correct or not. Uh, oh, I gave you credit. Um, okay. Because <laughs> we had talked. Don't, don't, don't sweat that. Um, yeah, it was, in, it was supposed to be elf. Uh, that's what I thought I had written. And you came up with something else and I didn't care. It, okay. <laughs> it, it was close. I mean, that, you know, whatever. Uh, and uh, for today, is uh, is it also similar or like? No, uh, no, no. There's no, no. no, I'm not even taking a roll tonight. Okay. Okay. Copy that. I just wanted to make you're sure. Free. Yeah, right. you're, you're free. All right. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. What is the permission code for, um, uh, what is it? Math 15B? 15B? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The course no, a code, bleh, bleh. okay, I'm in trouble. The course code, excuse me, wait, the course number is 81423. That's math 15B. Yeah. The secret code, your permission number is 453-915. Okay, now let's go to next.
Okay, I'm in. Yeah, I think it was just that one code that um, was, we was had. Screwed up both classes. Yeah. So I'm enrolled in both of them. Great. Yay. Okay. 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 And right, then, so, so there's an attendance. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to establish. Yeah. Okay. Most people are attending. A few people are flaking, and I'm trying to the first couple weeks. Um, if you'll pardon me, be a be kind of a hard ass on attendance. Okay? Yeah, I get it. Just yeah, there has been. Don't worry about. I mean, you're now some someplace different. Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right, check back at your screen uh, for uh, Zoom for a second. Okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm in Canvas. Can okay. you see that or not? Yeah, I see it. Math 19 or not, uh, math 96. Yeah. Okay. I want to show you one or two things a little bit. Okay. okay. I don't want to overwhelm you, yeah. but I'm in student mode. So this is what you will be seeing. You wanted the syllabus. Yeah. Okay. The syllabus is here. Click on it. Okay. I have the syllabus, the schedule that will follow and all kinds of other crap. Okay. Okay. You, you can look it up yourself. It, I'm yeah. not going to waste your time. Let's go back to modules. Okay, this is what people are talking about. Okay, collapse. First off, Angeline was a TA, uh, I mean, um, assistant I had a few semesters ago. She okay. took gorgeous beautiful notes. Now the class is a little bit different, but her notes are still really, really relevant and really good place to go. Okay. Okay, that's number one. Angela. So is there no book for this class then? There's no book and I'll show you how to get around that okay. also. This is a totally free class with the exception of a calculator. Okay, come down here to elementary chapter one and two. Now, it looks really scary mm -hmm. when you open this up, okay? But what I put here is my opening night PowerPoint, okay? It, there's no whatever. You can look at this or not look at it. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. I was talking about formulas to memorize. That's here. I was talking about I did work problems tonight. Those are these work problems, what I just did. Okay. You, you can download them at your leisure or not. Okay. Now, we talked about videos to study. Okay. Um, this is our first day of class. Week one, day one. I've recorded me. Okay. Week two, day two. I've recorded me. They're all on YouTube. And they're all closed captioned. They should be. Now, here's the thing. Down here, um, there are... These are older videos. These are from previous semesters. Okay. So if my video up here didn't make sense, maybe this video down here makes sense. Okay. So I give you all of these videos. They're all from uh, previous semesters, but these are the newest ones. <laughs> and you can tell by the date. Does okay. that make sense? And then did you guys had class three days last week, correct? Yes. Okay. So that's, that's why I have week one, day one. Okay. Week one, day two, week one, day three. Okay. All right. Okay. Got that? All yeah. right. Now that for now, that's all you need. Okay. okay. Except for, except for, okay. Um, I think, did I send you information about mom or do you want to get started on the homework or not? Uh, yeah, I'll start on it tonight because I don't want to be playing catch up too much, you know, so I'm going to try to get as much done as I can. I have other, I'm taking other classes, of course, so I have to do homework for them, but I'm going to try to get as catch up as yeah. I can. We and I will, I will give you extensions. Don't okay. panic about tomorrow night's quiz. Okay. okay. It's, it's not good. So I mean, hang on. I'm... Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Everybody's writing. New. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Mom. Is it literally just called mom? Well, yeah, we're lazy. Um, attach. Okay, hang on. Okay. 
Oh, my open math? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I'm sending you an email. Not yet. Okay. Uh, I can close that. So, boom. You should be getting an email soon. In the meantime, I'm going to go to mom and show you what's there. Okay. Okay. So as soon as you get now, right? This is mom. I went to mom and it's just myopenmath.com. Okay. Well, but we're lazy, so we call it mom, M O M. Okay. Yeah. Um, you'll register as a new student. Okay. And fill in all kinds of crud. Uh, and I just sent you in the email. It'll ask for, you know, what's your, what course do you want to enroll in? You want to enroll in my course. So I'm sending you that email that shows you do that. Um, it'll say, what's, what's the secret code? And yeah, I'm on it right now where it has like your, choose a username, password, email, and then course ID and enrollment key. Yeah, yeah, you fill all those out. Okay, hang on, let me do me now before you do you. Okay, just a minute. Um, password. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm in it. Yay. Okay. I changed my password the other day and pff, whatever. All right. Um, let's go in. I'm going to go in as a student. I'm in as an instructor so I can see anything. I'm going to change it to student view right now. So this is what you would be seeing. Okay. All right. Are you seeing mom on your screen, on your Zoom screen? Uh, yeah. And then I see um, a few, like it's a highlighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go to student view. So okay. I give you a little welcome here. Okay. Um, in here where it says before we start quizzes, okay, and stuff, the syllabus is also here. I okay. think, or is it here? One of these two. Check. Oh, there it is. It's under resources. Duh. The syllabus and the time schedule are all under here. Okay. And a bunch of information. You can read those at your leisure. Okay. okay. What the homework is, is right here, this yellow tab, where it says elementary algebra. We're starting chapter one. Okay, we're in. Anything that has this pad of paper with a pencil is a homework assignment. Okay. Okay. So you click on it and you say, I want to do it, or you, for you, you'll be starting fresh, okay? And you just answer the questions on, on the screen, okay? And, whoops, like I've already hit these in. Uh, type the place value for the number eight. Well, eight is in the hundreds place, so you type hundreds. Okay. So you just type, you just answer the question, and when you're done with that question, you hit submit, okay. and you just and you just keep going through the homework that way. Okay. Now, um, all of chapter one and two are supposed to be due on this coming Monday at midnight. I will give you obviously an extension. Okay. I, I will also give you an extension on the quiz that we're getting tomorrow night. So don't panic on that. Okay. okay. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, no problem. I mean, I'm trying to get you in. Is it uh read this week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're back here. So chapter one has all of these sections. Each one has, you know, some are longer, some are shorter, whatever. Okay. And so you go through and, and you learn. Now, you said, is there a book? The answer is yes and no. Let's go, let's go say you don't know how to add positive and negative numbers. Chapter 1.3, you're not sure about it, okay? So if you click, if you click here, you see where my little finger's pointing? Yeah. You're gonna get the homework problems. But if you click here, notice it says textbook pages. 
This is a link. Boom. That goes to an on. Come on. That goes to an online textbook. And if you want to buy the book, you can, but you don't have to because this is it. It's an online text that shows you section 1.3. Okay. Which, which is what you're doing. So if you think my lectures are good enough, great. But if you think you need a little bit of extra, you find yourself, yeah, I'm not real strong here. And Foster didn't really talk too much about adding and subtracting integers. Then you can go to the book okay. and, and, and get that, okay? So it's, it's a resource, but it's not required. And it definitely is free. And then okay. is the homework due every single night or is it due like at end of Thursday? No, uh, this homework um, I gave to students. Actually, I started contacting students two weeks before school started. Uh -huh. I said, and so it, it frustrates me a little bit when everybody goes, I'm not getting it done because chapter one and two is pretty much review and pretty much basic. Um, and I gave them two weeks because I said the first couple of weeks is really hectic and crazy. So if you could get started. So two weeks before school started, I had this open for them. But notice there, it was due. All of these are due on Monday, February 14th. So no, you just do them when you can. Okay. And just as long as you're done before the Monday, February 14th, I'm happy. Okay. okay, so could I possibly like start some of them tonight and absolutely, well, and absolutely. Do so, it's not. I'm not going to need your lecture to start some of it tonight. And no, then no, 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 no. Some of this, this is all such fundamental basic review. Now you um, may need a few, okay, but probably you don't need too many. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, you can start that. Now I want to show you one other important thing, and then I'll be quiet. Yeah. Um. What time is 9.14? Okay. Um, I want to go to the calendar. Uh, some instructors use the calendar in Canvas. Um, I personally like the calendar in Mom better. So here's our Mom calendar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's telling you, uh, let's go back. Okay. For example, Okay, on Monday, January, the, uh, February 31st, bang, you know, what the hell's bang mean? Well, you tap on it and it gives you a little description of what bang means. Okay, we start. Okay. Okay, tap on go. Okay, and it tells you what go means. Now, let's go down, let's get more, more weeks. Let's go to eight weeks. So what's our date today? Today's the ninth. So we're right here. Okay. Yeah. So we want to go. I got a quiz tomorrow. Tap it. And down at the bottom of your screen, where this menu is covering up everything. Okay. It tells you, oh, the chapter one, two quiz. We're going to have a quiz on that day. Come over here where it says homework due. Monday the 14th, tap on it. Down here, it tells you all of the homework that's due. So, it, you know, so if you didn't read the read it before, it's all here in the calendar. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And then so we get all these quizzes. Part, I'm sorry? It seems pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it is, which I, that's why I like mom, but some students can still not understand no matter what you do. Okay, <laughs> the, big, the big thing, all of these are quizzes. Quiz, 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 homework, homework, homework. The big thing is March 10th, right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's gonna be our first exam. Okay, exams are like big giant tests, whatever. Yeah. We will be in class for that exam. Okay. Okay, we will be in class for that exam. And I'm going to give people more information. Nobody's asked me about it yet. I've shown them, but 
it'll be a written exam, show your work, show your steps, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So anyway, you think you can get started on mom? Yeah, it doesn't seem too complicated. No, but right, right now it's not. And it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. So do what you can, get as far okay. as you can. And um, I hope that you've seen that I really enjoy having people ask me questions. Yes, interactive. And I, and I don't get too frustrated. Sometimes I do, but, you know, um, so I'll answer any questions you have. You can email me um, and I'll try and answer them over email or if we need to get together on Zoom, we can do that too. Okay, all righty. Well, tonight I'm gonna start, get started a mom and uh, watch some of the lecture. I probably won't watch a full one because it's getting later on, but yeah, uh, I will start some of that and hopefully I can try to catch up by the end of this weekend and stuff, so. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, if you can, uh, but don't don't concern yourself about tomorrow's quiz at all, okay? Uh, and don't concern yourself if you can't uh, about the homework due on Monday. We'll figure out how to extend it. Okay. And we just took a quiz, um, whatever it was. Oh, that was the other thing. This this quiz here. All it is is practice inputting weird numbers in math using menus, mom menus. It's just practice. Okay. There's not, not much to do. Um, when should okay. I do that? Um, you can, I think you can go into practice mode now. I, I tell you what. <laughs> Tell me when you're feeling a little bit comfortable and I'll open that one up also. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take both of those quizzes, hopefully like next week, early next week. Yeah. Um, just so I'm all catch caught up and I'm not trying to work on next week's work and yeah. You know, yeah. In like previous. Um, so I want to try to do it, get all caught up on everything this weekend. Um, okay. And get that done. And well, then maybe Monday comes around and I could email you email you Monday morning and be like, hey, I'm caught up with everything. Is it okay if you open those two quizzes for me? Sure, that, that's no? fine. That's cool. Okay. We can we can do that. I'll, I'll play everything by ear. I'll listen to you okay. uh, until you're caught up. Okay? okay? Thank you so much for understanding. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, I just think registering at this school is stupid. I mean, the computer it's system. Yeah, it really, it's not as easy as it should be. And I don't know. Yeah. You know. Okay. All right. Okay. So see you later. Yep. Bye bye. See you tomorrow, see you tomorrow. night. Okay. Bye bye. Have a good night, Professor. You too. Thank you. Bye bye.